In this short video, we're going to learn how we can extract data from XML files, or in other words, parse XML files using Python. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, and it is frequently used when storing or transporting data. To begin, we're going to look at a very simple XML file that I have up open in the editor on the right hand side. Within this file, you can see that we have very basic information on two stocks. The first one is the Microsoft stock, and the second one is the Apple stock. For both of these stocks, we have the name, the ticker symbol, the price, and the currency of the price. And there are two things that I want to point out straight away. The first thing is that the information on each of these stocks is enveloped within the stock tags, and the stock tags are then further enveloped within the data tags. Now, since the data tag is the outmost tag, which envelopes everything else, we call it the root tag. And it is important to know that every XML file needs to have exactly one root. In the editor on the left-hand side, I'm going to have the Python file open, within which we're going to write the code that extracts the data from the XML file on the right-hand side. In order to parse the XML file, we're going to be making use of a module called element tree. So in the very first line of code, we're going to have an import of the element tree module. The next thing that we need to do is we need to parse the XML file on the right-hand side into an element tree that we can then retrieve data from. So over here, you can see that I have the variable tree, which is set equal to et.parse. And then within the arguments of this function, I'm passing in the file name of the XML file. And in the next line of code, we are going to be setting the root equal to tree.getRoot. Remember how earlier I said that each XML file needs one root, and the root is the tag that envelopes everything else. So if we look at our XML file, we can see that the root is the data tag. So it should be no surprise to us that if we execute this very first print statement that prints the tag of the root, we receive as a console output the data tag. Another thing that we can do is we can print the length of the root. You can see that when I execute this, I get two in the console output. The reason why I get two is quite simply that there are two children right beneath the data tag. We have these two stocks. You can see that if I, for example, go ahead and remove the second stock and only leave the Microsoft stock inside and then go ahead and execute this again, the length has gone down to one because now there is only one child below the data tag and previously there was two. But let's put the Apple stock back inside because we're going to use that later on. So as you can see, it is pretty easy to access the tag of the root and also determine the length of the root. The next thing I want to show you is that it's very easy to do exactly the same thing for the children nodes that lie enveloped between the data tags. Let's say we want to get the tag of the very first child of the root. Then all we need to do is to add a zero within square brackets after the root. So if we go ahead and execute the next print statement, you can see that we're getting the tag of the very first child, which is stock. And this next print statement allows us to find the length of this very first child. You can see in the console output that we receive the length of four. Now the reason why we receive four is quite simply because our very first child which is the stock tag, envelopes four other elements. And you can see this clearly in the XML file over here on the right hand side. Another very simple way that we can retrieve data from this XML file is using a very elementary for loop. Let me uncomment this block of code over here and you can see that this for loop is going through all the children in our root. And for each child within the root, it is going to output the name of the very first tag and the value within the very first tag. In the XML file, you can see that the name of the very first tag is name and the value is Microsoft. And then in the second child, you can see that the name of the first tag is name and the value of the first tag is Apple. So that is exactly what we are given in the console output when we run this. And clearly, it goes without saying that you don't necessarily need to output the very first element. You can also go ahead and choose any other element. Let's say we want to output the price. Then all we need to do is to exchange the index 0 for the index 2, and you'll see that we get exactly a comparable result, but now we get the price tag and the price value. 
Within the for loop, we are accessing the information on the individual stocks relative to the stock tag, because of course, the stock tag is the child of the root. And that is precisely what we are iterating through in this for loop. If, however, you want to access the information on the stocks relative to the root tag, you need to use two indices. Let me show you what I mean by that by uncommenting this next code block. So if we have a look at the very first two print statements, you can see that we have the index zero twice. And that means we're looking at the very first element and then also at the very first element within the first element. That's why in the console output, we can see the tag name and the value Microsoft. And then in the next two print statements, you can see that we're accessing the ticker tag and the ticker symbol of the very first element. And then finally, in the last two print statements, we're looking at the tag and the text of the price in the second element. So up until this point, we should have a pretty good understanding of how we can access the tag names and the text values within the XML file. Another thing that we can do is we can also access attribute values. For example, you can see that the very first data tag that we have, our root tag, also has the attribute date. To access that, all we need to do is we need to print the attribute of the root like you can see within this print statement over here. And if we execute it, you can see that we get the date. Another thing that we might frequently want to do is we might want to iterate through the values of tags that appear in multiple elements. So in our XML file, for example, you can see that we have the ticker of the Apple stock, but also the ticker of the Microsoft stock. And we can iterate through both of them by using the iter function. To see how we can use this, let me uncomment this next for loop over here. You can see over here that we have, as an argument within the iter function, the tag ticker. And so it is searching for all the tickers within the root and iterating through them. And for each and every ticker, we are printing out the text. So if I execute this, you will see that we have the Microsoft ticker and the Apple ticker being output in the console. Another very helpful function is the find all function. And what it does is that it finds all the children with a specific tag name. An important thing to note here is that when we execute the find all function on a node, it only searches through the direct children. It does not look through the grandchildren or any other level below that. I think it will become clear when we look at this example over here. Let me uncomment these next two print statements. You can see in the very first print statements, we are using find all on the very first child and we're finding all the prices and then we're printing out the length. And then below that, we are um, referencing this first element that we find and printing out its text. And when I execute this, you can see that the length that I'm printing out in the first print statement is one, because of course, in the very first child, we have only one tag, which is called price. And then in the second print statement, you can see that we are printing out the value within the price tag. Next up, let's talk about how we can manipulate our XML file through the Python code. If, for example, we want to change the price of the Microsoft stock, all we need to do is we need to access the text field of the price and then set it equal to the new price, which is going to be 233. Another change that we're going to make is we're going to remove the currency information from the Apple stock. To do that, all we need to do is write root.remove and then in parentheses pass in the node that we want to delete. Now these two changes that we have made to our document will only be made if we write these changes to our XML file. So we need to execute this last statement, which is tree.write and then in parentheses, we pass in the name of the file, which we want to write to. And you can see that when I execute all of this, the price of the Microsoft stock has changed to 233 and the currency information has vanished from the Apple stock. 
Alright, so we're going to leave it here for now. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like below and subscribe to this channel if you want to help me out. And let me know down in the comments below if I should make a part 2 where we go into a little bit more detail. And as always, see you in the next video.